Hi, this is Dr. Kramer, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the King James Bible and about bookmaking in the early modern era, the 16th and 17th century. Um, now, I have here with me a page from an actual first edition King James Bible, which was printed in London um, by Robert Barker in 1611. And I do have a certificate of authenticity here um, just to show. Um, so some of you may ask, why does Dr. Kramer have a page from a 400 plus year old book? Um, long story, but the short version is that I happened to be at a museum many years ago that was having a raffle and the museum was having an exhibit about the King James Bible and Bible making. And I entered my name in the raffle and they called me about a month later and I had won a page. So probably what I'm thinking is happening is I had some incomplete Bibles and um, so they were using these pages from the Bibles um, as kind of uh, raffle items to increase visitation at their exhibit. Um, so this is in a frame. I have a sister-in-law who is a um, librarian who's a preservationist and so she has got it mounted for me. But it's double-sided and so it's very loosely mounted and it's just really tacked on at the top. Um, so what I want to talk about first is the size. This is called folio size, which would have been the biggest um, kind of type of book that they printed at the time. And obviously, if you have another page here, you can imagine how big the, the book would be. So this is like a coffee table book size if we're talking about modern day. Um, and so these were for um, that size, the folio size was for books that were considered really important. Um, so of course, the Bible, um, history books, um, eventually, some of Shakespeare's friends, after he died, put together a collection of his plays and something called the First Folio, which is um, a very important work that we'll talk about in our Shakespeare lecture. But um, just to kind of give you a frame of reference, this is a folio size. Um, and then most books would have been printed in what's called a quarto, which would have been a fourth of this size. So the paper would have been folded and folded again. So this was printed on a printing press. Um, and I'm going to come really close to you. This is from um, the Gospel of Luke. And you can see here it says the straight gate chapter and it looks like XIIIJ. And that is how you wrote Roman numeral 14 back in the early 1600s. And then you see it has a, um, a helpful header here on the top of the page, dropsy healed. And so what the King James Bible translated as dropsy, a, mo a more modern translation might um, say leprosy or something like that. So this is from the book of Luke again in a gospel. Um, you'll also see that it has cross references down the side, just like a modern Bible might have, but no notes or interpretation given in the actual Bible. And that was something that King James um, asked the people who translated the Bible, King James was not the one that translated it, to avoid putting in. He did not want a lot of interpretation put into the Bible. He just wanted the Bible there for people to see. If you look closely, you'll see that there are two types of type. There's this, which is very modern, and then they have this type of type, which if you look at it just glancing, you might think, oh my goodness, that's completely unreadable. And it is very hard to read, but this is modern English, early modern English, but modern English. So um, this is called black letter. And you'll see at the beginning of the chapter, it will have things in italic or like Roman print, what we would call, and then it goes into the black letter. Um, I'm going to get even closer just so you can kind of look. Um, uh, just a few things to note about typesetting and spelling back in this time period. Um, there were no dictionaries for English yet. That comes later in the 18th century. And so spelling is not regularized. So sometimes you will find spelling or words spelled different ways on the same page. Also, some letters that we have today, like um, the letter J, are not really used here. So if you can see here on verse 34 of chapter 13, this says, O Jerusalem. Um, and you see there's not a J there, a capital J. You'll also note that some of these letters have what's called a long S which looks like an F. You see this here on the straight gate, and you see this here on Jerusalem. And this is actually um, a letter that's still in use when you 
are getting to the United States and the Declaration of Independence. So I'm not quite sure when the long S went out of fashion. I'd have to look that up, but that's just another thing to note. All right, so that's the King James Bible from 1611. This is a first edition page printed by Robert Barker, and I will see you next time.